Creo 4.0, Lesson 5, Part 2. The last portion of this lesson, we are going to cover layers and sections and relations. Things that we're going to do to set the model up for correct design intent. So we're going to start off with creating some layers. Go over to Show tab and the Layer Tree. That is also available in other places. You can always type in layer, and it will show you where it is on the view tab, or I should say on the ribbon tab. So normally you get it right where the model tree is. Go to the layer tree, and you can click on the little down arrow here, new arrow, or you can just click in here, right mouse button, new arrow. And we're going to give this the name of hole holes and don't do anything else just type in the name and what you want to be able to do is come over and select what you want to go on this particular field right here so you click in where it says hole here you can also do it on a model tree and then click again it's one of the few times you don't have to use the control key to gather the selections so click OK and you can see that it puts a brand new layer over here. The layers over here you can use to manipulate the geometry. You click on it, you hide. You can select certain ones and hide those. And what that'll allow you to do is turn them on and off on this on the part itself. They are features of the part, so they do not go off when you click in here and select this. In fact, if you notice, when I do that, the axes go away and the coordinate system went away. So instead, let's go down here and, and take a look at the hole. I selected one hole, and I should have selected both holes. I thought I did. At any time, you can go to Layer Properties and see what you picked up here. Looks like I picked up the wrong one. So I can remove that one and make sure when I come in here, I am selecting the other hole. OK. And then if I want to, I can suppress these. Now that actually unregenerates them or does not make them part of the model. Now, that sounds like it's impressive because you can use the word hide also. For instance, we could go and collect these two and um, we could hide them, but they still will not take the feature off the screen. So instead, let's click in here in the field for searching and type in suppress, SUP. And you'll see that the suppress command comes up under operations when you're in the model tab of the ribbon. So I'm going to select these two and go to Operations, Suppress, and Suppress here, and then click OK. Now, Suppress actually suppressed the feature itself, did not just turn off the axes. So that's the difference between being able to hide them and suppress them. Now, whenever you have your model tree, I'm going to go over here and turn on the model tree. You want to make sure that you have this set so people can see what's going on with your suppression. So here's suppressed objects. Those features wouldn't be showing over here. If this was unchecked, we wouldn't know that they were available as features already modeled into the part. And again, let's go back over and go to the, mo the uh, layer tree instead of the model. And let's go over here and select these two and see what the options are. We're going to go to Operations, Resume, and we're going to resume all. So the holes come back. So when we can manipulate the geometry using, or the visualization of it using Suppress. But when you just want to see it different, it's best to hide the axes. And you can also, let's go back to the model tree, you can also go and 
click on it and see what's available here. You'll see that we have show and hide. Now, let's see what else we've got here. Now we'll just leave it like it is. Okay, so it's still on the screen. The next thing is we're going to create a cross section, and that's used in the drawing. So we're going to go over and select. We can select the top here, and that's just planar. Here gives us the choice of what direction to do it in. This can be changed once you're inside of the command. So we're going to click on planar. We're going to select D. Uh, we're going to turn on another color, and we'll put the cross section in. We will put a little view of it. And when we zoom in, we can see that that hole, the tip is not showing because the model, the datum plane does not go down the middle of the model, of the, um, the hole. It goes down the middle of this little earpiece here, and it's symmetrical, but not here. All right, so while we're here, let's see what else is available. We could go and we could actually turn on the dragger and make a different section through here. And I'll undo that. And complete my section. Now, you'll see that it's over here in the model tree. And if I want to deactivate it, I can click in here. If I want to edit the section itself, the section lining, I can come in here and I can select a different material. And I can adjust that material too. So, for instance, if I decide to keep it at steel, it would go here. If I wanted to move it to iron, this is kind of the generic one. And I could also change the scale. And I could also go in and I can change the color. Like so. Apply, and then shut the dialog. Control D to go back to the middle. So that section is now available, and it can be displayed in a drawing, not just on the model here. Next thing is, I did mention the aspect of symmetry to make sure this is uh, always going to stay in the middle here. So, for instance, uh, if I double-click on this cut, well, let's start off with the, the body first. Double click here, and let's say I want to make it longer. So I'm going to make it seven inches. And as far as the width, let's say I want to go all the way to five inches, like so. And I'll left mouse click, it'll regenerate. Now I'm going to click in here and double click on this section. And in this case here, uh, let's make it uh, 3.5, like so. And you'll see what happens is that the datum plane did not go with it here. So how am I going to keep this slot in the middle? The slot is built around this datum plane. If I double click on the datum plane and put my cursor over the dimension, I can see that it says D14. If I double click on this cut here and I put it over the top of the 3.5, I can see that it's D7. So basically, we want D14 to be one half of D7. Now, your D symbol numbers may be different, so don't get confused by that. We're going to go click on Tools, Relations, and we're going to click here and put a cursor here, and this is D7. And I'm going to click on the datum plane, D14. So D14 equals D7 divided by 2. Type in 2. And I'm going to go and verify my relations, and it says it's OK. Doesn't mean it's correct as far as I want to do, but it says the relation works. And you could type this in also. Just remember your D symbols are important to recognize which ones you're using. Yours will possibly be different. So I'll click OK. And right mouse button regenerate and you can see that this went back in the middle. Now let's say that you don't want these 
sizes to be quite what they are. You want to go back to the original. And this one was uh, 2.5625. And the, I'm going to click twice, double click on here, double click on this one. And I'm going to type in three because I kind of forgot what it is. I think I know now. So this dimension was 1.875. And this dimension, the three down here, 2.5625. Or whatever the book says. Now, the overall dimension was 5.5. .5. So you can see I'm back to where I wanted it to be. Now, I created a relation to control the datum plane. I could do something similar to the hole, but instead I'm going to click on the hole and go to edit the definition of it, and I'm going to look at its references. I can see that one of them is to the edge here, and I think this is supposed to be 2.05625 or something like that. But this one here, I don't want it to go to datum B anymore. So I'm going to remove that. Right mouse button, remove. I'm going to hold down my control key. That's important. And I'm going to select datum D. And instead of an offset dimension, I want it to be aligned. Check. So now, if I come and I wanted to do some changes, in the sizes and want to see what happens with it. My overall dimension here, let's make that four. And double click in here and let's make this one three. You'll see now that it follows along. Oddly enough, the section did not follow it. So let's finish that and regenerate and go back into our section and edit the section. The references here, date and plane, it should still be on there. That's interesting, it's not updating. What we'll do, first of all, let's go back and change our sizes so that we have our 1.875. And also our 2.5625. And that should be correct there. Go to the model, regenerate, right mouse button sometimes will get you that depending on what's selected at the time. So the section regenerated itself. I'm not sure why it doesn't do it automatically, but I did notice it does take a couple other commands for it to re-engage with that datum plane. I'm not sure why it would do that. Now, last thing is doing a little bit of flexible modeling. And we're going to just move a surface. I'm going to select the top surface here. And I can move that surface. You can also rotate it a little bit. Pull it. and create a different design option, one off. And I can see over here that it put it inside the model tree, but there's no dimensions. And again, this is always a little disconcerting to me. If you put this directly into a uh, 3D printer, it's okay. But as far as generating a dimension, you're going to have to add some dimensions 
but uh, they're not going to come up automatically because it's not a parametric feature. Okay, you're just stretching some other features that exist already on the model. Last thing I do, I go over to the model. I'm going to go back over to my layers and go to the layer tree. And if I want to, I can go down here and take a look at some of the options that come up when we're in the layer tree. One of the things you want to do is you want to spend some time investigating what's going on with the commands. You know, you want to learn everything at once. It's not possible, but every once in a while, just go through and see whether or not there's something all else that you can uh, uh, work with on the layers or on anything so that you can see what's available. And I'm going to go back over to the model tree. And that concludes lesson five, part two.